Hello and welcome back to my scrap room. My name is Jennifer Perry. I figured out that it has been a hot minute since I did a scrap room tour and my room as of Christmas is completely finished. So I wanted to take a moment and give you a quick tour. We're going to be mindful of the light. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shut the curtains really quickly so that you don't get blinded out but that's the room with the window open. And I need to throw in a disclaimer really quickly. I have cerebral palsy, so the camera is going to shake a little bit. I apologize for that. I weeble wobble. It's just what I do. And then the only editing I'm going to do is if I have to sit down and stand up and sit down and stand up to show you things. So that you don't guys do not have to watch me sit down and stand up. So let me shut those curtains and then we will get started with the tour. Okay, so this is the room with the window, the curtains shut. So it's a little bit darker, but you guys won't get blinded by the sun. So the first thing you see when you walk in is my little magazine holder that I keep my misties in, my clipboards that I use for heat embossing, my scoreboard, my trimmers, anything that needs to, it's kind of hard to store, I just sit in the magazine rack and I can flip through it. The desk is L-shaped and it's 9 foot by 9 foot and my husband built it for me. It's a little bit shorter than a standard desk because I'm a little bit shorter and I don't like my legs to dangle. So he made it a little bit shorter for me. And we're going to go this way so that you can see there. I'm going to give you a full tour of what's going on, but I just want you to kind of see the outlay of the room first. Okay, so this end of the desk is, again, the magazine holder, the printer, this is office -y stuff, anything that you would need for your office, but I don't like having it out because I have cats. This down here is the next little project that I keep putting off, but I'm going to have to get it done. It is some memorabilia that I found in a closet, and I want to get it sorted, and I want to get it put in that bin and put back in the closet. It's things that I don't want a scrapbook, but I don't want to get rid of. It's breaking my heart to get rid of it, so I'm going to store it properly. And then... This is getting more towards my work area whenever I edit videos. I like to keep my tech off the desk. So you'll see I have a lot of stands. Like I've got a phone stand there. I've got an iPad stand there. My computer stand there. And then this shelf. I like to keep all of my tech stuff off the desk because the boys do run and go running through on the desk. And if anything gets knocked over, if I'm working with inks, if I'm working with water, if I'm with my cup, anything gets knocked over, I want my tech to be protected. Just have some magnet boards up there. My lava lamps. I moved my chair out of the room so I don't trip over it. And see, this happens a lot. What are you doing? Dumpling. He doesn't know. He wants to go look at things. What are you doing? See, they get up on the desk all the time. And this is a desk they are allowed to get up on. Because they get up in the window and they watch the birds. So this is my creative end of my desk. He's wondering why the curtains are shut. So I have my art lamp, my copy holder. When I've, I'm using sketches, I can put it up there. I have a couple of spinners. This is my ink spinner. This is my open inks that I'm currently using. And then this is my tool spinner. And I keep tape here for when I'm stitching. Hey, oh, he's getting in the window. So that's what they do. Give me one moment. I'm going to sit on the floor and I'll show you the drawers. So hold on one moment. Down here I have my regular heat tool. That is not my embossing gun. That's just for drying mixed media. My husband added a power strip for me. Hi, bud. Don't eat it. And then in these drawers, I have my trimmer. This one lives here. My press and seal that gets used all the time. My long arm stapler, which is a recent find, and I'm wondering why I waited so long to find one. Various little tubs and bins that I throw stuff in. And then this top drawer is kind of a mismatch. It's supposed to be for scraps, but it ends up being for daubers, my watercolors, scraps, my foam tape that I accidentally bought a life supply of. 
my pokey pad, some uh, oven liners that I use for heat pads, just anything and everything that I need to reach for, it kind of ends up in this drawer. And then every now and then I put things back where they belong. This is everything that would normally be up on my desk when I'm working, but when my boys were born a couple of years ago, mainly him, I had to change the way my desk stays put together. So I can't have anything on my desk, like my scissors laying down or anything like that, because they will knock them around and knock them off the desk and whatnot. So I came up with this option. And when I'm working, I just open it like this, and it's very easy just to reach down and grab what I need. So I have my most used distressing inks here, along with the daubers, my little stitching tomato, some stitching supplies in there. That's a miscellaneous stuff that I don't get into very often. Hand cream, a rotary trimmer, my desk templates, some more stitching supplies, my bitty sparkles, and I, some more often used sparkles that come out of that bin. That's where I keep all of my sparkles. And then I just refill this one at my desk, which reminds me, I need to add this to my, I'm gonna set this up here. That needs to go in my retreat box. So I'm gonna add that to my retreat box. You'll see in a minute. I almost forgot it. This is punches mainly. Every now and then something else gets thrown in here, but it's mainly punches. And then more punches and some foam tape that I use for thickers. It was just easier for me to throw it down here because I always kept forgetting where I put it. And then my little hockey puck for my Misty. Okay, this is the bottom part of the bookshelf. I'm going to just stay on the floor for a minute. This bottom bin is completely empty. I just changed how I keep my ephemera, so that is completely empty. This is my sparkle storage, and I keep all of my sparkles in here, and then I just refill the one that lives on my desk. This is my variegated thread, my button bin, my... This is how I keep my foams for my inks. So this one is, it looks like for my Distress Oxides. And then I have one for my Close to My Heart. Those are 12 by 12. They're supposed to be page, like to keep projects and stuff in, but I put one in the back of all of my albums to keep the memorabilia that I don't necessarily scrapbook. They're from Close to My Heart. They're full 12 by 12. No, actually, these are scrapbook.com. I lied. Okay, scrapbook.com has them. Close to My Heart has them. And then I just use my crop dial and poke holes to put them in my album. And then back here is my large format stamps. So my Studio AE Ali Edwards. My large uh, Close to My Heart stamps when they used to have large format. And then some idea books and workshop past workshops that I want to save. This is inspiration right here, my little inspiration area. And then I'm going to stand up. So give me just a moment. Okay, so next we have a ink spinner of my open sprays and stuff that is going to be changing. I am about to start ordering all of the inks. I just realized how wonderful they are and now I must have all of them. So this is actually going to be changing soon. And I'll show you what that is. Everybody needs a chocolate station. My water brushes, my paint palette. And then in those boxes is envelopes for finished cards. So like the cellophane envelopes, that's where those live. And then my Make It From Heart, close to my heart inspiration books, various menu planners and binders up here. Those are extra empty binders my thickers, and then some random finished mini album type things. And then my embossing cart. This doesn't normally live here. It normally lives in the closet, but I pushed it over here to get it out of the way one day and went, hmm, I like it there. So my little embossing cart just kind of, I put it in here because I, I wheel it everywhere. So this is my embossing gun, and I just put it in a 
galvanized flower pot that I picked up from Michaels and then I put a pot trivet in the bottom because the tip gets hot and I didn't want the bucket getting hot. That is my stamp chamois, just various tools that I like to use. This is a um, appetizer tray that I bought off Amazon that I just kind of throw things in, but the top is my most used. And then I keep my embossing powders in these little bins. And that way I don't have to worry about making a mess when I'm trying to get it back in the containers. So these are my embossing powders and then that is just extra supplies on the bottom. Like bulk supplies. Okay, so now we're going to go from the embossing cart up to this first alpha shelf. I've got one going all the way across the door, the, above the door that has finished albums, empty albums, photos that I am finished working with but I don't want to throw away. And then this is a Disney album that I have been working on since 2006. That'll be my forever album. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever finish that one, but that's all the memorabilia and pictures for that one. The gray bin is planner supplies. The next to it is the, the binders are stamps that I have taken out of their bins, taken out of their envelopes, and put them on acetate and then put them in a page protector and I made stamp binders. Let me grab one and I will show you. So basically, I put them on acetate and then I put them in page protectors. And these are the stamps that I know I am going to keep forever. I am not going to get rid of them. I'm not going to sell them. So I was quite happy just taking them out of their pockets and putting them into binders. And it's just a, a regular sheet of copy paper, the white paper behind them to make it easier to see the stamps. And then I just label the spines. So these are the ones that I know I'm never gonna get rid of. They are my absolute favorites. And they I just needed a different way to store them so they didn't take up so much room in my craft room. And then the space where you see them leaning over, that was a sketchbook that I took out and it's in my retreat stuff that's going, to me, going with me to retreat. And then another binder of Alan and Davis sketches. I will spit it out in a minute. So stamp binders and then sketch binders. I don't know which one is which, but one of them is my brother Scanicut. The other one is my Cricut. I don't know which one is which because the the covers and the shelves get moved around whichever machine I'm using. And then this is where I used to keep all of my stamps. And now it keeps some of my stamps, my finished cards, my ephemera, my M size stamps, and then I've got an empty one down there. So, like right now, this is sentiment and card stamps. So that's all of my close to my heart stamps. And then this is other stamps, <clears throat> like not for card making. This is how I am keeping my ephemera. That's just a bag of sandwich baggies. I figured out that I like keeping them in just sandwich baggies <clears throat> because the baggies are cheap. They, I can reuse them over and over till the bag falls apart. And I don't like opening packaging and then not being able to get it back in the packaging. So for me, sandwich bags just work out really, really well. They don't take up any room. They're easy to replace and they're cheap if they fall apart. And then this is where my finished greeting cards live. So that if I need a card, I just open it. This is my 6x6 six six paper pad. I don't have a lot, but I have enough. And then this is my stamps that have dies with them. So if it has a die and it's a stamp, it's in this drawer. And then, of course, a bin of cereal bars because I hate going downstairs if I get the nibblies. This is a current diamond painting that I am working on. Because I do scrapbooking, I do diamond painting, and I do planning. So I've got planner supplies in here, diamond painting supplies in here, and scrapbooking supplies. We'll open the closet in just a moment. So this next shelf is empty albums and albums that are currently being worked on. So those are my active albums. And then my washi tape, a little bit of decorative stuff my lava lamps, my Scentsy, 
one thing that I do for myself, because we do have a lot of paper in this room, is I do not burn candles with a flame. I burn my scentsies. But I will melt down any candle that I like. I'll melt it down and then I'll pour it into a mold and make my own little scentsy molds. So that I can use any candle I want in my scentsy burner. And then this light stays on if my burner is on to remind me to turn it off. I used to turn on the lava lamp to do it and then I realized I wasn't turning everything off because I didn't recognize that the lava lamp was on. So this is my die cutting station. I have my electric big shot. I adore that thing. I have my cuddle bug. I bought the cuddle bug when I was teaching with Close to My Heart and I needed something a little bit more quiet when I was doing videos. So I bought a cuddle bug to do it in my videos, but that travels with me now. So I have the electric big shot, my cuddle bug. This is just a cutlery bin that you would use like for picnics. It has everything you need for my cutting. This is extra envelopes for my die cuts. And then these bins have my die cuts in them. So this is the large format die cuts, and then these are the regular die cuts. And this pocket that I'm using is by Stampin' Storage. And I'm going to show you right there. That's the pockets that I'm using to store my dies in. And then I think, nope, that's still the pocket. Okay, these are fridge bins. I know they are six inches in width because the pockets are six by seven, I believe. So I know the width is six inches and then the height really doesn't matter. This is a little Elfish shelving that somebody was going to get rid of and I grabbed it. So the bottom has trash bags in it. This is stuff that will not fit in a drawer. It just doesn't fit so I leave it in there. This is binder clips, parchment paper, foil, some large format baggies, and then this is all of my stuff that I need if I'm getting sticky or a splat mat or anything like that. My magnet sheets, printer ink, my label maker. I have a sharps container to put blades and needles in. And then when this is full, I just duct tape it a few times. It goes in the regular trash. But I feel better having a sharps container because everything, you know, I don't have to worry about somebody taking up my trash and getting poked with a needle or getting poked with a razor blade. And then this is my wax melts that I make for my Scentsy candle. And then my large cutting mats. I do have a fridge in my room. It comes in very, very handy. It started out as a way for my crop guests to put their drinks in here, to put their snacks in or whatnot. Now it's just my fridge. I love it. And then this is my project bin. So what I have right now is if it is ready to be scrapbooked, it has all of the photos, it has all of the memorabilia, and all of the journaling is done. It gets put in one of these 12 by 12 bins and says ready to scrap. And then I know when I'm ready to work on this album, which this is the album that I'm currently working on, I just grab this bin and take it to my desk. And I try to stay a few years ahead of myself. So I've got 2019, 2020. I've got uh, my Australia album in there. The cruise that mom and I took together. You need to move along. So this is a cruise album that mom and I went on that I'm going to be working on soon. Are you going to help me? This one's empty. And then down here is diamond painting drills that were extra from paintings that I have completed. But you want to keep these in case you were ever short a color whenever you were diamond painting. So these are Tic Tac containers inside a 12 by 12 iris container. And I've got one for square and I've got one for round. And they are so worth it if you're in the middle of working on a painting and realize that you are short a color. So this little bin right here, the bottom is my paints and watercolors and glitter. There's glitter in there too. This is my hot glue gun and extra scissors. This is 
the Tombow that I keep out to make it really quickly for me to grab some while I'm working or filming. And I'll stand up and show you this drawer. And then this drawer is my sanding tools, my pencil sharpener, and that type of thing. There used to be more in here, but I took it out and put it in the closet. Okay, so that is just a little bench that lives in here that I put stuff on when I'm working. That is a little basket of rags that can be used for inking. And then I'll show you my credits in a moment, but we're going to go up one. This is my toolkit for when I go on retreat that lives up there and it's not with my retreat stuff yet because my cat that is helping us today likes to eat handles so that one is still up there I'll show you the rest of my stuff in a minute this is all of my flip flaps and they are in a letter organizer by size so that if I need a flip flap by size I know what I have and I used to be a consultant so yes I have a lot of flip flaps so this drawer unit is for diamond painting. This drawer unit is for scrapbooking. This is all of my page protectors. So it is my regular 12 by 12 page protectors and it is my 12 by 12 pocket scrapbooking. This is my French vanilla cardstock and watercolor cardstock, my white daisy, my black, my glitter paper, some flip flaps. This does say pocket protectors, but it is the um, the ones that flip flap out that are 12 by 12, and then True Fit folios. That is a project uh, that is a product that Close to My Heart had out probably 15 years ago, and then when they retired it, I bought up every one that I could because it just makes a 12 by 12 double page layout into a quadruple layout, and I love it. I don't use them very often. I hoard them. And then these are my drying racks so that like when I do a lot of mixed media and I have a page that needs to dry, I just put the page in there and it can dry without anybody walking across it. And then these are my project grid paper that I, if I'm designing a card or a layout, and then some layouts that need to be put away. And I do have a step stool that I can get up there. So this, that's just a miscellaneous drawer a card kit that I'm working on. These are my paper organization sleeves that I keep all of my kits in and my cardstock in. I get it from the checkout store in Amazon. And then my labels are the Ultra Tabs by uh, Avery. And I just have them come in with my subscribe and save. And they live with my paper organization. So they just live in that drawer. I know where they are. This is my stencil supplies, my stencil sheets, and my vellum that I use for journaling. I have three sets of inks. This is my close to my heart inks. This is my distress oxide inks, my ribbon, and then my distress, my regular distress inks are up here. <laughs> Excuse me, pardon. And I keep them in a 12 by 12 because I bought the minis. And I purposely bought the minis so that I could travel with them. So I just have them in a 12 by 12 and then I've got them separated by color in 4 by 6 envelopes. And I have them like this on purpose just so I can travel. And they live up there for two reasons. First off, I don't want to put them in my closet because for some reason the closet is not very well temperature controlled and I don't want them getting too hot or too cold and I wanted them near my inks. So all of my inks are in kind of the same spot. These drawers, I love these drawers, they are life. So each drawer is labeled with family and then what year of memorabilia I am saving. So like this is 2022 so anything that I want to scrapbook or save gets thrown in this drawer along with the planner at the end of the year because I use the planner to help me reference dates and stuff. So everything that may possibly be scrapbook just gets thrown in a drawer. This is my junk drawer. This one down here is anything to do with travel and my and my 
wax molds. So any little bag or anything that might be used for travel gets thrown in there. This is my mixed media bin. So anything that I might need for gel plates or mixed media is in there. This one is diamond painting supplies. So all of my diamond painting supplies are in there. And then this one is more diamond painting. Now if you are a diamond painter, there's my stash. That's it. That is the entire stash of all of my diamond paintings. This is a project that I have been gathering supplies for for many, many years. It's going to be a heritage album of my family. So I've got Perry, which is my married name, my mom's side of the family, and my dad's side of the family. And I'm going to be working on heritage albums for those. But right now, I'm still gathering photos. So they all live in there. This is my planner tote. For the most part, this is all of my planner supplies. I have just set up my new planner, so my stickers are on the low end. But I save up my stickers throughout the year, and then I sit down for a large planner session. I go to Starbucks, I enjoy some music, I enjoy some books, I get a cup of coffee, and I just set up a planner. So this is my little planner binder. And then behind the door is my re-inkers. And we are going to be adding, I've got them ordered, they haven't come in yet, another six of these. These are spice racks from Ikea. So I have another six of them coming that we're going to put here for my dispressed strays. Strays? Sprays? My sprays. And I have a spray sitting up there so that my husband can have one when he is spacing them out. So that's my re-inkers and then my sprays are going to be right next to it. And before we get to the paper island and the closet, I want to show you a couple of diamond paintings and a painting that my daughter did for me for my birthday that I absolutely adore. And it fits the style of this room so well. So these are just a couple of diamond paintings that I did specifically for this room and framed them up and now they're leaving my room. So my paper island. I love my island. I'm trying to get backed out so you can see. So basically we just took a desk from Ikea. All of this is from Ikea. Took a desk, put it up on furniture legs and made an island with a spacer underneath it. My paper containers, my 12 by 12 inserts, come from Stampin' Storage. They are the, I have both of them. I have the 12 slot and the 15 slot. Two of these were made by my husband. These, that one over there and that one over there was made by my husband. He was actually going to make all of them and just didn't, didn't have time. The poor man just, he didn't have time. So I just bought one box a month, one insert a month. They're about $70. I just said, okay, I'm going to buy one a month until I get everything that I want. So let me sit down and I will show you everything. So these first two bins are my hip kits. I love my hip kits. So these are where I keep hip kits by month. And my tab just tells me what they are. This is single pattern paper that I have killed the kit or almost killed the kit but this is the paper that I still want to use it so like when you're down to one or two sheets in the kit then I put them down here and they are just categorized summer winter wedding Halloween Christmas that type of thing this is my stitching bin so everything to do with stitching is in this bin this bin is pretty much empty except for well you can't see hold on <laughs> I'm doing a floor scoot. This bin has a couple of stickers. Not much. The cats mainly cl uh, climb in there and sit down. It's stickers that I'm like okay with if they sit in there. If it's completely empty, they want nothing to do with it. And you'll see there's fur on these because they try to open them up. And then this is just some extra um, containers and stuff that I use on various projects and scrapbooking pages and stuff that I can just grab as needed. This bin is my close to my heart paper. This bin is Echo Park and it is cocoa vanilla when I can get my cocoa vanilla. They're very very hard to find here in the states but when I can get my hands on it I buy cocoa vanilla. It is my 
one of my favorite paper companies, along with my close to my heart. Well, actually, what you see here, these are my favorite paper companies. And again, I have a record sleeve and an Avery tab. And these Avery tabs are kind of like post-it notes, so they can be moved around. So I just put everything in an Avery, I'm sorry, I put everything in a record sleeve, I pop a tab on it, and one thing that I've started doing is I'm trying to put the date of when we got the paper pad. So that's that one. Let me go around to the other side and I'll show you the other side. Okay, so this side is all of my cardstock. This is all 12 by 12 cardstock. It is all close to my heart cardstock. I adore their cardstock. So once a year when they do a color change, I, however many colors they have, whether it's six color change or whether it is an eight color change, I buy every color in the cardstock, the stamp pad, and the reinker at one time. I make a massive order and I just buy the new colors. And then what I do is I have it stored in the record sleeve. And then down in the record sleeve, I also, I put one sheet to tell me what color it is. And then I will put the scraps. And I don't know if you can see, but there is scraps in there. So the one piece of paper that tells me what color it is. And then that is my scraps. And then the actual paper is behind it. This is my Cricut Joy. Some empty albums. And then underneath, I have my Cricut mats. This is the tray that goes with my current diamond painting and my light pad. A little box of ephemera that I am working on, my watercolor pencils, my tins unit, because for some reason when I get up here my neck starts hurting, so my tins unit. That thing is worth its weight in gold. This is a tray of my Lindy's Magical Powders. And then the current colors for stitching. And I was keeping it in the drawer, but I found out I like it under the desk better because I can just grab it. So this matches the Close to My Heart cardstock. And I just, again, when they do the color change, I just go to the hobby store and pop a squat in the stitching aisle for the DMC thread and just match up the cardstock. On top of my desk, this desk is a workhorse. So right here, this is just baby wipes. This is my foam tape and my score tape. That's just a flower vase. This is a huge cheese bowl that my mother found when she worked in a grocery store. And it is perfect to keep all of my blocks in. So they live right there. All I have to do is turn my chair around and grab a block. This is my silicone mat, a glass mat that I mainly use to transport items that are drying. Like right now, I'm working on a huge Christmas tag project. And when the Christmas tags are drying, I put them on here. I take this to my desk. And then this is what I pick up and transport with. This is a bin of, not a bin, it's an album of all of the oddball page protectors. I had them in a drawer and I got tired of not being able to find what I need. So these are like the 4x6 vertical. These are, these are 3x4 horizontals. 4x6 horizontals. It doesn't matter what company, everybody lives in the same bin. 3x4 verticals. Just various companies. That is a mix. So like for pockets. These are 6x12. These are 9 by 12 pocket pages. These are still some more 9 by 12s. And then this is 9 by 12 full pages. And I, again, I had these in a in one of these drawers over here, 
and it was just bothering me that I would, anytime I wanted an oddball sized page protector to put in my albums, I'd have to go digging through it. So I was like, you know what? I was on scrapbook.com one day. They had their albums, their 9 by 12 albums on sale. And I went, I'm buying an album just for this purpose. And I picked red so that it makes it very, very hard for me to lose the album in my room. These are some crystal dishes that belong to Michael's grandmother that I use for ephemera whenever I am scrapbooking. They just live on my desk. They look very pretty. And then I have all of my recent catalogs with Close to My Heart. I order from Close to My Heart. I love Close to My Heart. My, my consultant knows me by first name. So these are just the current catalogs. Along with a project that I'm going to be starting. And I don't know if I'm going to get to it or not. So we will talk about that later. This is a recent idea that I just found out about. And I fell in love and did it immediately. So let me show you. You know how when you're die cutting letters or die cutting anything and you want to use the negative space but you don't know what to do with the letter afterwards. You're not sure how to store it. These are the Jumbo Foam Dauber containers from scrapbook.com. And they have the letters inside them. And then I just sacrifice some thickers to put on the outside to mark what's in it. So two of these is the full alphabet and then one more is numbers and punctuation. So three dauber containers from scrapbook.com can house your, your alphabet when you have random letters from die cutting that you're not going to use but you've got a place to store them. And eventually you will have a use for them. And when you need it, you'll be able to find it. And this is my current album that I am working on. So it lives here. And then as the pages are finished, I go ahead and put the pages in the album. So that lives there. Okay, so now we're going to open the closet door. This closet literally was just finished Christmas. Christmas was three days ago. And I am so, so happy. Now, before I open the door, I need to tell you that I was watching a Tim Holtz video. And he opened his closet door. He was doing a scrap room tour. He opened his closet door and the angels started singing. And what he said made sense. This closet was not built out before. It was... Literally, my daughter moved out of it, and I put stuff on the floor. I wouldn't show you this closet before because it was a it was a hot mess, but now we're going to open the door. And I have the curtains open. They normally stay shut. I have the curtains open so that it makes it easier to see. So on the door hangs various sweaters and my book bag for school. And then that is a gift for a friend of mine. I've got it up there so the cats won't eat it. I just purchased a step stool dedicated for my room. So I do not have to go wandering all over the house to find my step stool. And then let me show you. This is the closet. So it goes all the way up. It is two baker's racks from Costco and four bin packs. They had some bins right next to them, and I'll show you that I bought four packs of them. So, I had this, and one of Tim's ideas was to just jack it up on the top shelf. So, this is my less used items, but stuff that I do need to get a hold of. So, like, 8.5 by 11 page protectors, large manila files, my acetate, my laminator and my laminator sheets, light bulbs for, like, for my room and my alt light. The top shelf here is extra storage bins and stuff that I access frequently. This is all of my specialized envelopes, my backdrops. That is my paper pad for a desk paper pad, photo mailers, and all of my little bags and stuff that I use, 12 by 12 and zippy bags and stuff. So right here is all of my 
like stamp cleaner, sprays, gamosol, stays on cleaner, alcohol, alcohol prep, that type of thing. The spinner in the back is for a project that I'm working on my daughter and I don't want to lose it. Unopened sprays. This is the cardstock that I'm using to make my tags out of, so I just set it in a bin that's easy for me to pick up and transport to my desk. So these three things are for my tags at the moment. So my cardstock and muffin tin. And then this is what I use to hold my glue and stuff whenever I'm working on the tags because I don't want it rolling all over my desk. This is jewelry baggies that I use for smaller ephemera. And then here is the sandwich baggie bin. And like I said, I just reuse them. So when a bag gets empty, if it's in good shape, I just throw it back in here to reuse again. If it's not, I go ahead and throw it away. But I have a dedicated bin so that I can put them back in a spot and I'm less likely to throw them away. This is my bulk Tombow refill bin, my other adhesives, foam brushes and paper plates for when I'm working with glue, embossing folders, blank journals, small tools, miscellaneous older embellishments, desk supplies, and then down here, this is my gift tag project. This is my December daily project. This is a bin that stays packed for day crops. So this is what I would like take card kits or something that I can get done in a day. This is the bin that comes with me. I'll talk about the bottom shelf in a minute. This is all of my card bases and envelopes that are ready to make cards. And one of the tips that Tim gave is if you have empty space, go ahead and put a bin on it. Put an empty bin on it and get bins that match. So like these are from Costco. These are the ones that I bought with the shelving. And basically I'm trying to get a large, medium, small. So that my bins fit whatever I'm trying to store in them. So I went and just bought regular shoe boxes from Container Store and I like the Container Store ones because they're a little bit better made than Walmart. They're a little bit more sturdy. And I just have them set out so that when there's something I need to put away, I can just grab the bin, pull it down, put it away. Instead of digging through my empty bin storage up here, this is less accessed. And I don't want to have to grab and dig to find my shoe boxes. This is some 12 by 12 storage for the iris cases. There's some stuff that's in there, there's some that's empty. This is the large shoe boxes from Container Store that I use for larger projects. I have my selfie printer back there and then some photo place card holders and type stuff. Some photo mailers, coffee filters and doilies, ribbons, again an empty bin. And then this is my photo sorting supplies and stuff when I'm getting ready to get all of my stuff ready to scrapbook. And then this is another bin of empty containers and stuff that I use for scrapbooking. Kind of like that, the black bin, but more. And then down here is everything that I'm taking to retreat. So there's my gearbox. I've done a video on all of this. So here's my gearbox. This is like the cuddle bug or my sidekick, everything that I would need, inks, everything that's not paper is in this bin here. That's my paper bin, the album that I'm working on, my desk shelf is sitting on top of that. And then this is the luggage that I have just for taking to retreats. It is an underseat spinner. It's really no bigger than one of these bins. That's how big the bin is. The suitcase is not much bigger. It's just for a weekend trip. So I just stick it right in there so that I know where it is when I'm packing for retreat. And this is exactly what I'm taking to retreat in a couple of weeks. So it's all packed up and ready to go. And the only thing that I don't have here is my desk supplies that is up on the shelf. And I have it up on the shelf so the cat doesn't eat it. So again, here's just a quick overview of the closet before I shut the door. And I'll shut the curtains and stuff when we shut, you know, when I get done with the tour. Because I try not to have light in that room. So this is my room from the cutting station. 
I'll put the recycle bin back. I moved it to open the door. This is my room with me standing over by the black bookshelf. Caddy corner to the door. And my constant companion, my little sleeping kitty cat. That is Dumpling. So I hope you enjoyed the scrap room tour. If you have any questions, please let me know and I will be happy to answer your questions. This is my happy space. This is where I spend 40 hours a week. And just know you do not have to have everything in this room. I have been scrapbooking for 20 years. I was a consultant for almost 15. And I do this every single day. This is my love. This is my passion. And like with making the gift cards, that's, that's going to be gifts. That's going to be things that I send to family. Making my greeting cards, I send those all over the place to my family. So this, it makes my heart happy. It makes my family happy. And like my daughter told me just a couple of weeks ago, she was looking at some scrapbooks. And she was like, Mommy, please do not stop scrapbooking. And that is, she's 26 years old. That was the first time she's ever told me that. And she was one of these kids, you know, her entire life is documented. From, from the time I started scrapbooking to current day, her entire life is scrapbooked. And she used to find it quite annoying that she always had a camera in her face. But now she understands why. So thank you so much for joining me today for this scrap room tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.